Okay, so we're now going to go over this worksheet. We're going to go through all the questions. When we get to questions like six, seven, uh, six and seven, I might not go over seven because it's the exact same thing with six. Um, so we'll see. But you asked to go over all of them, so we'll see how long the video is if I'm going to go through them. So for this uh, x and y, uh, for here, it doesn't say anything like what is x equal to. It just says x and colon. So what we're saying or wanting there is, well, what does it represent? So it says the graph the right models a scenario below. Let's fill in the blanks below to find the equation that models a scenario. So we don't see anything labeling our x and y axes. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying, well, what does the x axes represent? What does the y axes represent? So Morgan worked a summer job. She saved her money during the summer. The school year is starting, and she plans on spending the same amount each month. Now, when you do this, um, you don't have to write it exactly like I am. You just need to make sure that you're writing enough for me to know that you understand what it is. Because if you just wrote money or you just wrote savings, you just wrote months, like that doesn't really tell me enough. Uh, and remember, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything. You have to explain to me. This is defining your variable. So you are defining what this variable means in the context of this problem. So for X, it says she saved her money during the summer. The school year is starting. She plans on spending the same amount each month. So for this, we have to say, okay, well, she has money and we have time of month. Well, which ones are independent? And since time is always independent, that is our independent variable, which is our X. So I can't just write month though, because what does that mean? So I'm going to say amount um, or not amount, uh, number of months she is spending her money. All right, as long as if you're just doing more than just months um, and you're doing some sort of description of it, that's fine. For Y, well, that's how much money that she has left. So amount of savings that she has left. So amount of savings left. So this way, anytime I see on this Y axis, if I see that there's 12, it's at 1200, well, that's telling us how much money we have left. All right, so now for the slope and Y intercept, we actually do want to find what it is. So for a slope, we need to see where is it cross at the corner because that's telling me whole numbers. So those are two points that it crosses at the corner. So one, two, three points down. Now, the mistake a lot of you were making on the last test was you were just counting the, the tick marks and say, well, it's minus three. And here we're going minus two, or I'm sorry, to the right two, so positive two. So you're saying this is your, um, your slope. But now you need to see, well, is that what it actually stands for on our axes? So if we're at 1,000 and we're going to 2,000 and we have one, two, three, four, five tick marks to get to 2,000, well, 2,000 divided by five is equal to 200. So that means each of these tick marks is actually representing 200. So when I go down three, I'm actually going down 600. When I go, now I need to look, well, what am I traveling for the X axis? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Since that fifth one ended at five, I know each tick mark actually does represent two. So it's negative 600 over two or negative 300. And what this is meaning in the context of our problem, because it's change in Y over change in X, well, it's her savings or money spent. So it's how much she spends each month. So each month it's going down 300. So that's how much she's spending each month. Our Y intercept is where it crosses our Y axis, which is that point there. So it's at 2000. And we can say uh, her initial total savings, or we can say how much money she saved in the summer. We wouldn't say her total savings or something like that. I mean, you could, I guess, uh, but uh, we would just say it's how much she saved in the summer. Because uh, if you say like total savings each at each month, um, you're not talking about the Y intercept in particular. You're talking about any point of Y. So Y intercept has a particular point and meaning, well, at zero and 2000, well, before we started spending anything, that's how much money. So we can say it's how much money she started with, her savings, or how much she saved over the summer. And then the equation for this would be uh, y is equal to our slope, so negative 300x plus our y-intercept, which is in 2000. And I also ask you to do your x-intercept. Well, that will be here where we cross our y-axis. Now, from here, I'm not asking you to solve it. We're just reading the graph. So I'm going to say it's approximately, uh, let's say it's 6 and close to 7, so maybe 6.75 or whatever it is you might want to say. As long as you didn't say like 6 or 7 and you said something closer than 6.5, that would be fine. Because um, we're just approximating it. And then our meaning here is that uh, that's how 
many months until she spends all of her savings. All right, so let's move on to the next question. It's the same thing. So from here, it says to start his lawnmower business. Uh, James have, uh, had to first buy a, lawn, a riding lawnmower. Once he bought it, he started earning a consistent amount of money each week. So we can then say number of weeks. And here we can say uh, money earned. So our X to define it would be number of weeks worked. And for Y, we can say uh, total amount of money earned or profit, maybe that you would say as well. Uh, if you just said profit, that one word actually could give it all. So here I'm going to look for where it crosses our corner. So we have one in there. So same thing. I'm going up to, but now I need to say, well, if how much am I actually counting by? So one, two, three, four, five. So same thing. Five gets me to 1,000. So I know each tick mark is 200. So going up to is actually four. Going over one, well, one, two, three, four, five. So each one is one. So 400 over one is 400. And the meaning of that is that's um, how much money he earned each week. All right, so our y-intercept is where we cross that y-axis. So here, since I know that each tick mark actually represents 200, well, one tick mark below 1,000 is, is 1,200, so it's negative 1,200. And if that's our starting point, that means it's zero and negative 1,200. Well, it says after he bought the loan, uh, uh, riding lawnmower, et cetera. So that's at the initial. So that means it's how much the uh, lawnmower costs because at zero weeks earned he's at negative 1200 our equation for this then would be y is equal to 400 x minus 1200 our x intercept is where we cross our x axis so it's here so it's one two three so our x intercept is three um, and the meaning of this is uh, how many weeks until you can say he paid off the lawnmower. But if you know, like business words, you can say until he uh, breaks even or broke even, uh, that would be enough for me to understand what you're talking about with that as well. Because when you break even, it means that you're not earning or losing any money, you're at zero. All right, now we're going to go over the next page. All right, so for this one, it says the value of Sarah's car is decreasing by a consistent amount each year. The value of her car can be modeled by Y is equal to 18,000 minus 1500. So it tells us it's decreasing by a consistent amount each year. So that's telling us what our slope is. So when we look at this, uh, what is the y-intercept? Well, it's 18,000. So if it says that the value of Sarah's car is decreasing by a consistent amount each year, well, this is then the initial value of her car or how much her car is worth now, if we wanna say it's, it's, it's what she's at now. And the slope, we know it's how much it's changing by. So we know it's this, so minus 1,500. And it says it's decreasing by a consistent amount each year. So that's how much, how much value the car loses each year. Now, you can't say that 18,000 is how much they bought it at because we could buy a used car that's actually worth more than what we paid for it. And it doesn't say anything about buying it. It just says the value of Sarah's car is decreasing each time. So I wouldn't want you to say it's what they bought it at. It's what her initial value is. How long will it take for the value to be 7,500? Well, when we see this Y is equal to MX plus B, well, if we say that it's, it's a consistent amount each year, and that's what we're multiplying our slope by, then we know that X represents years. And then that means our Y needs to represent the total value at any given time. So when it says, how long will it take for the value to be 7,500? Well, how long is referring to time? So I know that this has to re be referring to how much it's worth now. So that's why I'll substitute in for Y. So 7,500 is equal to 18,000 minus 1,500 X. So now we just need to go ahead and actually solve for X. So we would do 7,500 minus 18,000. which is then negative 
500 is equal to negative 1500 X. So now I'm going to divide each side by negative 1500. And when I divide that by negative 1500, I then get seven. So X is equal to seven. So that means in seven years, the car will be worth 7,500. Now for this one it says, what will the car be worth in 11 years? So they're telling us how long. So that is representing our X. So now we'll say Y is equal to 18,000 minus uh, 1,500 times 11. Well, 1,500 times 11 is equal to 16,500. So Y is equal to 18,000 minus 16,500, which is then meaning that Y is equal to $1,500. All right, so because we're going through this, seven is the same thing as six. Six is the same thing as seven. Uh, just even less because you don't have to talk about your X and Y intercepts. So I'm not going to do seven. I'm just going to do six. You have the answers. So if you need it, ask for help. Let's see if you guys can figure that out. So this says how much does, uh, so the cost of renting a jet ski for a certain uh, number of hours can be modeled by the equation given. Y is equal to 40X plus 50. So here, what does it cost per hour? Well, we know our slope is our rate of change, change in Y over change in X, and we know that it's per hour of our cost. So from here, our slope is 40, so that is how much it costs per hour. The fee is how much we're starting at. So when we rent this jet ski, no matter how long, well, how much are we gonna pay no matter what? Well, that's our initial fee, which is 50. So if it says, how much would it cost to rent for three hours? Well, we know time is always gonna be an independent variable, which is X. So if we wanna know how much it costs for three hours, well, it will be Y is equal to 40 times three or X plus 50. So Y is then equal to 120 plus 50 or Y is then equal to 170. So it means $170 is how much it will cost. How many hours would you have to rent for $290? Well, hours is X. That's what we're solving for. So we don't know. It says how many. And we know our total cost is 290. So then it's 290 is equal to uh, 40X plus 50. And now we just need to go ahead and solve for X. So we'll subtract 50 from both sides. So 240 is equal to 40X. Divide each side by 40. So X is then equal to six, all right? And that will be our final answer. Uh, you have the answers of seven. If you need it, um, uh, if you need help, just ask for it. Um, but we still have one more day of reviewing class.